In the last episode, we covered the most disturbing channel on YouTube. And since I released that video, a lot of new information has come to my attention. Friends, we haven't even scratched the surface of this series. Until now, we've only really gotten this far. But today, we finish this story. And by the end, I guarantee you'll want every single light in your house turned on. <laughs> Now, I'll give you a brief rundown of last episode in case this is your first time here. Police were investigating a homicide case when they came across several nightmare-inducing paintings. This one discovery would send them down a path of anxiety, despair, and death. An endless bloody road with no end in sight. With victim after victim going missing, then being found dismembered and mutilated days, sometimes weeks later, with zero evidence of who could have done it. No hair. No dead skin flakes, nothing. Just a uniquely titled, expertly painted artwork depicting the one who had been killed every single time. At this point in the story, 10 people have fallen victim to our unfeeling killer. A number that, very quickly, will seem like nothing. In the next video from where we left off, we learned that police had hired a private investigator named Sean Kane to help them find missing people connected to the paintings. But weirdly enough, Sean himself would come up missing shortly after he was searching the home of Tom Harris and discovered his corpse in the living room, stuck like amber in a human-sized pile of wax. This kill would actually be connected to a previous painting, Wax Doll Tom. Police would actually find out Sean had disappeared from his neighbors after they told police his dog had been barking for hours. When officers entered the home, they found the dog. Alive. But silenced. Trails of blood were found in the bedroom and kitchen. But perhaps most bizarre of all, Sean, seemingly in his last moments of life, had drawn a number two on the wall close to the ground in his own blood. As of now, we have no idea what this could mean, or why he did this. But if you have any leads, let me know in the comments. When police followed the trail of red into Sean's bedroom, they were met with a new painting. This one clearly depicting Sean. And just like that, he had become a victim in the very same case he was investigating. But there was one difference between him and everyone else. Sean had set up a surveillance camera in his home just days before the attack. And because of this, we get our second look at the one who's causing all of this pain. To me, it really looks like whoever this is, is wearing someone else's face while they commit these crimes. So that means the last thing these tortured souls see before death is this thing. Truly horrifying. Not long after this whole situation, Tina Rosenberg, along with her boyfriend Jack Stryker and her younger sister Flora, were reported missing after they'd never returned from a birthday road trip. But when police finally track down where the gang were planning on going, they find nothing but Jack's car, empty and abandoned. Inside the car, police found scratch marks and signs of a struggle, but most stomach sinking of all, police would find another painting, this one titled Flower Face Flora. With this discovery, police immediately knew who they were dealing with. As they were searching the car, hoping to find more paintings, officers heard screaming deep into the woods. The group immediately made way to the distress calls, where they would eventually find Tina Rosenberg alive, tied to a tree with her arms and feet cut off. Police had no clue how long she had been there. She was pale, like every ounce of blood in her body had run out, becoming nothing but fertilizer for the tree she was bound to. But arguably most gut-wrenching of all, laid next to Tina on the forest floor was the decomposing carcass of her sister, Flora. Her head had been caved in with a hammer. Police cut the ties that bound Tina to that dense old tree. From there, they began to carry her to the car. 
but when they got there, chills were sent down officers' spines. Inside their squad car was a fresh painting, with its title sloppily written on its back. The killer had just been there, and they were toying with police. They knew they had to continue with the investigation. The title of the newly made painting read, Long Jack and it seemed to portray Tina's boyfriend, Jack Stryker's severed head. With Jack missing, and the only other painting belonging to a dead member of the trio, we can only imagine what fate befell him. Luckily, one member of this birthday trip tragedy survived, and was able to provide police with a description of the person responsible, not that it would do much to stop them from killing again. Less than a week after Tina got the worst birthday present anyone can imagine, police officer Ian Ford is reported missing to his comrades in blue, which in turn causes everyone on the force to search high and low for their dear friend. They start by investigating the Ford family barn, where he had been living, along with his wife and granddaughter. Officers walk in expecting to see horses or his wife or some sign of life, but nothing. They inspect a little deeper and are assaulted by this putrid smell. A smell they've definitely experienced before. They press onward into the barn while both expecting and fearing for the worst. And not long after, sure enough, they would find it. Inside one of the stalls was the mangled, broken body of Ian's wife, Mayford. Her wrists had been handcuffed to a pole, but they seemed to have been torn off. Police wondered what could have created a force so substantial that it managed to sever the bond between bones, but upon further inspection of the stall, police found a dead horse that seemed to show signs of an overdose from Sildenafil. Now, if you know what Sildenafil does, then it starts to become pretty clear what happened to Ian's wife. But surprisingly, it doesn't stop there. The more police dug, the more horrifying discoveries they made. In the next room over, officers found a bloody mattress that seemed to have been in use for a decent amount of time. And right next to the bed, police would make another stomach-churning find. Wrapped in a blanket was the decapitated head of Ian's granddaughter, Fiona Ford. It's unclear how long she had been dead before all this started. She hadn't seen her grandparents in a while, after all. Police although numb by this point, tried their absolute best to press on through the barn. They had to. They still hadn't found their brother, the one who had been reported missing in the first place. They had to continue, bring their partner home safe, finish what they had started. With determination being the one thing to guide them, officers shuffled through the empty, lifeless stalls of the barn, looking for any signs of life, anyone they could potentially save and bring out of this hellhole. But then they find it. The most disgusting, wretched, vile thing any of them have ever seen. Inside the back room, countless human faces, some belonging to previous victims, were dotted around the walls, staring at them with their hollow, vacant sockets. It took a repugnant smell to get police to take their eyes off the horrid spectacle. But when they did, in the center of the room, an abnormally large, dead pig was found sliced open and carelessly stitched back up. Inside the animal's stomach was the rotting corpse of Ian Ford. The pig's eyes had been replaced with the missing eyes of Ian's granddaughter Fiona, perhaps symbolizing what the killer thought of her. The rest of Fiona's body would be found in the tack room soon after, along with an appalling eleven additional paintings, nine of which depicting victims we haven't seen yet. This psychopath is on a rampage, and I can confirm without a doubt that this is not the last we see of them. Well guys, that's all the information we have on this series so far. If I miss anything, please let me know in the comments. A part 3 is expected, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you know when that comes out. This series is such a hidden gem, so go check it out, link in the annotation. Alright guys, that's it from me. I love every single one of you with all my heart. Thank you so much for watching.